What is your name, please? My name is David Stewart. My name is David Stewart. My name is David Stewart. Only one of these men is the real David Stewart. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Dean, and Kitty Carlisle. On to Tell the Truth with your host, Bud Collier. And welcome once again to the Tell the Truth. Good evening, panel. Hi, Good evening. Evening. That's what I like. <laughs> Spirit all the way. We're brought to you by Dristan Nasal Mist, the decongestant nasal spray for relief in seconds from sinus congestion and head colds distress. Well, let's get right down to the core of things, panel. Open up that first envelope and follow along as I read from my copy. I, David Stewart, was born and brought up in England. I even spent two years as a constable or bobby with the Surrey County Police. I always, however, wanted to follow in the footsteps of my uncle, who was once a member of Buffalo Bill's Wild West Troop. Finally, I achieved my life's ambition and now earn my living as a cowboy entertainer. My act consists of fast patter and trick and fancy roping. I first discovered my natural ability with a lariat at the age of five when I started roping stray dogs. I have since refined my talents to include such intricate rope tricks as the ocean wave, the butterfly, and the Texas skip. Signed, David Stewart. <laughs> and these three gentlemen all claim to be David Stewart. Trick Roper. We'll start this questioning, if we may, with Orson Bean. Orson? Yes, uh, Mr. Stewart, number two. Is this your first trip to America? Uh, yes, it is, Orson. It is? Your first yes. time? Were, were you surprised not to find us full of Indians and, and gangsters and Well, things? I dress for the occasion, sir. <laughs> number two, do you ever... You don't suffer from hairballs or anything, do you? <laughs> That's a fine... Uh, you all... Uh, is that real? That thing on your, under your nose? Number, number, did I say two? I meant three. Number three. Sir. Is your mustache real in words of one syllable? Yes. It is, all right. <laughs> number one, you do fast patter? Oh, yes. It's not fair to ask you to tell us a joke, is it? No. No, no. all right. <laughs> in English, I meant. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Uh, number one, was uh, Buffalo Bill ever received at Buckingham Palace? Not to my knowledge, no. Number two, was Annie Oakley a real character? Oh, yes, she was. Number three, where is the Buffalo Bill Museum? I believe in Denver, Colorado. Uh, number one, uh, what is the Texas skip? A Texas skip is taking a, a butterfly all around your body. A butterfly? On a lariat? Uh, the butterfly is the loop. It's a vertical loop. Oh, I've got such a little mind. <laughs> uh, number two, how old was Buffalo Bill when he died? He was about... Uh, 65. Thank you. Number three, what is a head, what is a, a head of, a, of a constable in, in the police force in England? A chief constable? Number one, where is Surrey? Tom Poston. <laughs> Near Tom Poston. <laughs> no, uh, uh, number three, do you know what a dead man's drag is? <laughs> it is one of many names attributed to a, a trick in writing, I believe. Thank you. Uh, number two, how long have you been doing this? Oh, I've been uh, doing trick roping uh, and various other things since I was five years of age. Thank you. Number one, uh, do you agree with that, first of all? Well, I've been um, interested in using a rope since I was very young. Where did but you learn number one? Bombay. Bombay. For heaven's sake, is it, do you agree with that, number three? Egypt. You learned to... Baby <laughs> <laughs> uh, Number three, what is the CID? Criminal Investigation Department. Thank you. Uh, number two, what is Scotland Yard's number? When you ring for the police in London, what's the number that you call? Whitehall 1212. Thank you. Number one, what was Buffalo Bill's real last name? Um, Cody. Thank you. Number three, where is he buried? On Lookout Mountain 
in Colorado. Thank you. Number two, what is the main town in Surrey? Well, there are several small towns, but the main market town is Guildford. Thank you. Number and that's all we have time for. Good questions, panel all. And with what you gain from that, mark your ballots, if you will, please. Mark them at once, without change, and with absolutely no consultation while you are marking. Vote for number one, number two, or number three. And our team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. All ballots marked? Very well. Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three. I, uh, I don't know how he learned to rope in, in Egypt when he was born and brought up in England, but maybe his uncle lived there and his uncle taught him after he retired from Buffalo. It's a very exciting spot. I love it. Peggy Cat. Well, I voted for number three, too, because although his mustache is so wrong for a cowboy, <laughs> it looks like he should be in the Queen's Fusiliers or something. But he did know where Buffalo Bill was buried out in, the, in Lookout Mountain near Denver, so I voted for him. Orson B. I voted for number two. Even I, I think Buffalo Bill must have been older than 65 when he died, but, you know, I don't know when... My grandfather isn't dead yet, so I don't know when he died. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. I voted for number two. Uh, I, uh, the Buffalo Bill Museum is in Cody, Wyoming, and um, I think that's where he's buried. That I'm not sure of. But number two seemed to have a kind of marvelous grasp on Scotland Yard, and number one hesitated terribly when he was asked to tell a fast joke. And I think he would have wanted to if he'd been the real one. <laughs> so it's evenly divided then. Two for number three, two for number two. Let's find out immediately which one of these gentlemen, in truth, is the trick roper. Incidentally, panel, only the real David Stewart has the legitimate mustache that you're looking at now. Oh, the other no. two are phonies. So, will the real David Stewart please stand up? Uh, ah! 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 Thank you, sir, very much. Number uh, one, what is your real name and what do you really do? Well, my real name is Sam Packenham Walsh, and I'm the president of the company that imports Whitbread English Ale into this country. <laughs> and uh, number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? I'm Harry Noden, and I'm the assistant manager of Her Majesty's Stationery Office Publications. Back to you, David. I wonder if you will uh, Texas skip out here and do a little uh, twirling of the rope for us, will you? see how he gets everything through but the mustache. I don't know. <laughs> that clears, too. Thank you very much, sir. In checking the score, you should be reasonably happy, I would say, because you fooled him to the extent of 50%, and that's mighty good. And twice $250 is $500. Also, on your way out, you will receive a gift package of all the fine products from the makers of Dristan. Thank you very much for visiting us, and I hope you enjoyed it, too. Goodbye, and God bless you. Meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Anne Dagg. My name is Anne Dagg. My name is Anne Dagg.
Follow along again, panel, will you please? I, Anne Dagg, am a university lecturer in zoology and an expert on the giraffe. I gained my knowledge of the world's tallest animal at first hand by studying the giraffe in its natural habitat. I concluded that all giraffes are of one species, that they do lie down to sleep, and that contrary to popular opinion, they are not mute, but can whinny, bellow, and snort. The London Zoological Society published my findings as an unique scientific record of the behavior of the giraffe. Signed, Anne Dagg. These young ladies all claim to be Anne Dagg, giraffe expert. And we'll start this cross-examination, if we may, with Peggy Cass. Peggy? Thank you. Number three, where is Whipsnade Zoo? In London. Thank you. Uh, which, uh, number two, which bus do you take to get to Whipsnade Zoo? Number four. Thank you. Uh, number one, how come you decided to study the giraffe? I always liked animals, and the giraffes fascinated me when I was a child and went to the zoo. Thank you. Number three, how many baby giraffes does a giraffe have at one clip, at one litter? Oh, one baby. One baby at a time. Thank you. Uh, number two, how long do giraffes live as an uh, average? 28 years. Thank you. Number three, in all that long neck that the giraffes have, do they have like bigger larynxes and tonsils and adenoids and other animals? I don't know. You don't know? Oh. Orson Bean. Yes, number one. Well, why did you specialize in the giraffe as opposed to the wombat, <laughs> say, or the orang utang, or the gaboon viper? Stop me, one of you. What made you specialize? Or the kudu, or the dick dick. Or the kudu, or the dick dick. <laughs> I could go on indefinitely. What made you love this graceful, admittedly graceful creature? Well, you have to choose one, and that why? fascinated me. Why do you have to choose one? Number two, do you have to choose one? Well, that was my favorite. Well, I think that's sweet. Uh, number three. <laughs> number three, is the giraffe monogamous? By that I mean, does a, does a male giraffe look around at the lady giraffes, or does he settle down like, like the giant killer ape? Uh, uh, no, he's not monogamous. He's not monogamous. This gets good. Oh. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Number one, where do you lecture? I lecture at University College in Nairobi. In Nairobi. Number two, where did you study the giraffe? In Stockholm, to oh, start with. Not in its native habitat. And later on down in Transvaal. Thank you. Yeah. Number three, how long does the gestation period take for the giraffe? It's about 14 months. 14 months. Number two, what kind of noises does the giraffe make? It snorts, it uh, chuckles. Was it not known before that he made any noises at all? Well, people didn't think there was that many varieties Thank of noises. You. Number one, uh, how old is the giraffe in species? Is it a prehistoric animal? Oh, it goes back to the Miocene. I see. No. Tom Poston. Uh, thank you, Bud. Number one, you are a zoologist, so may I depart just long enough to ask you if you know whether there is such a thing as a white rhinoceros? Oh, yes, there is. Do you agree with that, number two? Yes, I agree. Number three? Yes, I do. Gee, we had a guy on named Gar a player who said there wasn't any. They were all just covered with dust or something. Okay. Uh, number one, uh, how do you begin your lectures? What occasion do you have to lecture, and when are you asked to lecture, may I ask? Well, I lecture at the college. I give courses in zoology. I see. Number three, oh. that's all the time we have. So whether or not there is, in truth, uh, albino rhino, take your ballots and mark them, if you will, please. Mark them at once, without any consultation, of course. Just simply vote now. For number one, number two, or number three. Have you all marked? No. Uh. All but one. Slow poke. And <laughs> Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one. I, I, uh, I, uh, burp. Yes, Tom. <laughs> I don't know. Why wouldn't number three know that how long the tonsils and things are if, if she'd studied them that carefully? And, and uh, I figured she should be a lecturer at a school. That's the best reason I ever heard. Yes. <laughs> Actually, I didn't vote for number one. The truth is... <laughs> Peggy Cass. Well, I voted for number one. Number three, I figured should have known whether it had a big larynx or, and, and number two said you took the number four bus and I thought it was the green line to get to the zoo. Maybe it's number four on the green line, but anyway, that left one. 
Orson Bean. Well, I voted for number one as well. If number two or number three had been the real ones, then one would have been a fake and wouldn't have known that there was a white rhino, and then the other two wouldn't have been so quick to agree with her. In other words, if she, I'm sorry. <laughs> Kitty I voted for number one. Although she hesitated slightly on pronouncing her name, I think she looks like the scholarly type who would be found in the ivied halls. Well, <laughs> unanimous. You don't risk those very often these days. Let's see how it works with you this time, shall we? Let's find out at once which one of these ladies, in truth, is the giraffe expert. Will the real and Dag please stand up? <laughs> Yes, how come Miss Dagg didn't know how big their tonsils were? And their adenoids, their adenoids. Probably never did a tonsillectomy, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Any reason in particular? Not reason, yes. <laughs> you just uh, studied their habits? I've never studied their anatomy. The anatomy they oh. never did study? <laughs> well, very good. It's, it served uh, monetarily, very handily for you. Number one, you got all of the votes. Yeah. What is your real name and what do you really do? No. My real name is Doris Whitaker. I'm a secretary with Lindbad Travel yeah. in New York. <laughs> Number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Ola Farber, and my, I'm co-producer of the Barry Farber Show. Oh. <laughs> Incidentally, just to keep the record straight, Anne Dagg is a lecturer at Waterloo Lutheran University in Waterloo, Canada. That's where she holds forth on the, on the giraffe. Well, I don't have to check the score for you ladies because you know already and they're probably mentally spent it. There were four incorrect, they're two hundred and fifty dollars each, grand total, one thousand dollars. And of course on your way out you'll receive a gift package of all the fine products in the makers of Dristan. We thank you very much for joining us and hope the money brings you great happiness. Goodbye and God bless you. Our third team of challengers. is your name, please? My name is Walter Rote. My name is Walter Rote. My name is Walter Rote. Now follow along on this story, if you will. I, Walter Rote, am the founder and president of the Universal Calendar Society, which is promoting the first major change in 2,000 years in our present confusing and cumbersome method of marking the months, the weeks, and the days. The new universal calendar consists of 13 months. Each month is exactly the same and never varies. Each begins with Monday the 1st and ends with Sunday the 28th. Four complete seven-day weeks. The new 13th month is called Solarius and falls between June and July. Supported by strong elements in the major religious groups, governments, industry, and the United Nations, the universal calendar not only simplifies fiscal accounting and standardizing work and school schedules, but also eliminates Friday the 13th forever. Signed, Walter Rote. panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Walter Rote, president of the Universal Calendar Society. Incidentally, panel, this is a typical month in the Universal Calendar. And we'd start with Tom Poston. Tom? Oh, thank you, bud. Well, Mr. Rote, whichever one you are, it's nice of you to want to eliminate Friday the 13th, but you're willing to give us an entire month of 28 days that comes on the 13th month. Now, if you were superstitious, this would really put you into a sweat. <laughs> Number one, what, did, what opposition have you had from people who are superstitious about this? Number uh, one. We had very little opposition from, so far, from superstitious people. Or anyone else. Oh, Number okay. two, who is, uh, would you say, what people were the greatest experts on the calendar and measuring the, the year and the day and so forth in history? Oh, most certainly the Egyptians. Do you agree with that, number one? Dark bird. Thank you, Captain. Number two, what are you going to do about all the people whose birthday's on the 31st? It'll automatically become the first. But it won't be their real birthday. 
Oh, in, so far as the nominal day is concerned, it will be their real birthday. I Just the date will change, that is oh. all. Well, number three, what about leap year? When is a girl going to get married? <laughs> it's, the same, it's the same thing as uh, happens in leap years right now. Uh, if you get married on February, tw uh, February 29th now, you can either take uh, the day preceding or the day after as your legal marriage date. Oh, well, I don't know. Some seems as though some of the fun will go. Now, listen, number one. When your rent is due... Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Horse and beef. Well, you have to think up a new calendar. Number one, uh, won't this be a little bit like uh, digit dialing and the other things which are taking the, the glamour out of life? I like, I like the fact that uh, the, yeah, you never know exactly when it is. Me too. Number one, am I dear? Don't uh, anybody... Industry object? likes uh, a standardization of everything, measurements and... Weights, pounds, and whatnot. Yeah, it's well, a, that's fine, number a, three. Uh, <laughs> I'm not that nuts, so we should do everything for industry. Industry, you know, gives us digit dialing and holes in the street, and a better New York is up to you and all that. I'm going to fight for the old... Uh... Kitty Carlisle. Well, I'm for it, because I don't understand anything about the calendar, and I'm always getting mixed up, and I hope it goes through. The only thing I'd like to ask you about, it looks very scientific, but number three, do you have pictures on your calendar? No. Oh, no pictures. What? <laughs> well, now, also, number two, you're going to have the 13th in the month, obviously. Is that going to mean that Saturday will be an unlucky day? Because Saturday is a lovely day, and most of the kids love it. Will it make Saturday unpopular? No, because the superstition through the ages has been Friday the 13th, not Saturday the 13th. You don't, number one, you don't think it has anything to do with the number 13 rather than the day of the week? No, in fact... Because uh, a lot of buildings don't have the 13th floor. And that's all the time we have. My, you all uh, spend so much time. In, yeah. in expressing your ideas, you didn't ask many questions. All right, mark your ballots with whatever information you do have. Mark them at once, without change, and of course, no consultation while voting. Vote now, if you will, please, for number one, number two, or number three. Okay, all ballots marked. Very well. Tom, for whom did you vote? I voted for number one, because I thought it was him. <laughs> <laughs> Peggy Cass. I'm against it. It's hilarious. It sounds as though you're born on the sun porch. I voted for number two, though. Horse and I voted for number two. He looks like the kind of a fellow who would pull a trick like this. <laughs> <laughs> a rotten kitty cat. I voted for number one because he looks like the kind of dreamer who would think up a thing like this. Well, there you go. Evenly divided again. Two for number one, two for number two. Let's try that on for size and see how it works out. As we learn now, which one of these gentlemen, in truth, is the president of the Universal Calendar Society? Will the real Professor Walter Rote please stand up? <laughs> Thank you. It would be nice to know that someday we can say with certainty the date is the 25th of February. Uh, number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? I'm Abi Ben Ari, the director of the Israel Government Tourist Office. Thank you, sir. Number three, what is your real name and what do you do, sir? My name is Edward Morrow and I'm a reporter for the New York Times. Score we find that there were two incorrect votes, and that's twice two hundred and fifty dollars for a total of five hundred dollars, gentlemen. And of course, on your way out, you'll receive a gift package of all the fine products in the makers of Dristan. Thank you very much for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the occasion as much as we did. Good night, and God bless you. Time for tonight. Good night to you, panel. Good night. Good night, bud. You always make it a good night. And good night for Dristan. Don't forget to join us next week at the same time. And, of course, I'll see you tomorrow afternoon on the daytime show. In the meantime, don't you forget to tell the truth. Bye. <laughs> to tell the truth is the Mark Goodson, Bill Potman production. What's all the excitement about? Well, tonight it's all about whether or not big dealer Barney Fife will actually sell Andy's home on the Andy Griffith Show. And tomorrow night it's about a teenage terror of a house guest on the Joey Bishop Show at 8, 7 Central Time. That's what all the excitement's about, so join the fun here on CBS.
To tell the truth has been brought to you tonight by Anison, a headache tablet to relieve pain, to relax tension, calm nerves. Anison. This is Johnny Olson speaking for To Tell the Truth, the program was recorded.